Hello, welcome to BL 101 New Testament Greek Lesson 3B. In this lesson we're going to deal with the present active indicative. Before we begin this lesson, let's do a really quick overview or review of what we know. Sentences are made up of words that can be broken down into different types. We have nouns, which are words that define and describe persons, places, or things. We have verbs, which are words that express action or state of being. And we also have a plethora of other types of words like pronouns, adverbs, adjectives, articles, and whatnot. But we're just going to deal with this lesson is the verb. More specifically, the present active indicative verb. The primary elements within the Greek verb contains a tense voice and mood. Uh, the present tense in the indicative format refers to present time. I run or I am running. I fish. I am fishing. Or I can say I write or I am writing. This is the present tense. It states that the verb's action is happening now in the present tense. The active voice represents the subject as acting, as opposed to the passive voice, which represents the subject as being acted upon. Here's an example. For the active voice, I would say, I am loosing the knot. If I were to convert that to a passive voice, I would say pretty much, I am being loosed. You see the difference there? So, the voice, active voice, represents the subject as acting, as opposed to the passive voice, which represents the subject as being acted upon. Now we've pretty much covered the present tense, the active voice. Now we're going to deal and talk about the mood of the verb, and specifically the indicative mood. Uh, the indicative mood makes an assertion. It doesn't claim whether to be truthful or not. It just makes an assertion in distinction, for example, from a command or a wish. Types of moods, there's an indicative mood where it says, I take the keys. There's the subjunctive mood, which would say, I might take the keys or I should take the keys. The imperative mood, which is the mood of command, take the keys. And finally, we have another type of mood, which is the infinitive, to take the keys. This lesson will focus upon the mechanics of the Greek present active indicative verb. This is so that the student doesn't get overwhelmed by the Greek verb. By this time, you should have been working on your vocabulary words for lesson three. And the words that we're going to be working with, you should be very familiar with by now. If you're having some struggles with these words, allow me to encourage you to go back over the vocab words. That's a nice thing about video classes. You can always rewind the teacher, rewind the lesson, and work on it. But the first word we're going to deal with is the word luo. Luo means I loose or I am loosing. Um, the, this would be right now, if we look at it, a present active indicative verb, but it would be in the first person singular. I am loosing. If we wanted to convert luo to a second person singular, we wouldn't say luo, we would say luais. Luais. Thou loosest or thou art loosing. So you see the change there on the ending of the word is the, goes from luo to luais. If we wanted to convert luo to a third person singular, we would say Lue. This would be translated, he looses or she looses, or he or she is loosing. So we see the singular, present active indicative singulars goes luo, I loose, luais, thou loosest, and lue, he or she looses. Now we have the plurals. First person plural, we loose, would be Luamen. Second person plural, 
ye loose or ye are loosing, luete. And then the third person plural, they loose or they are loosing, would be luusi. So we see the present active indicative of the verb luo. Let's provide another example. The word blepo. Blepo. In your vocab, you've learned blepo means I see. So the present active indicative, first person singular, for blepo is I see or I am seen. The second person singular for blepo would be blepes, thou seest, or thou art seen. Third person singular, blepe, he sees, or he is seen. Shifting over to the plural, first person plural, if we wanted to say we see or we are seeing, we would say blepamen. Second person plural, ye see or ye are seeing, blepete. And then finally, blepusi is a third person plural, they see or they are seeing. One final example we'll give here is the word grafo. Grafo means I write. In the singular, grafo, I write or I am writing, first person singular, present active indicative, first person singular, grafo. If we wanted to say the present active indicative, second person singular, we would say graface, graface, thou write or thou art writing. Third person singular would be grafe, grafe, he writes, or he is writing. Shifting over to the plural side, uh, present active indicative, first person plural, would be grafamen, grafamen. This would be translated, we write, or we are writing. The present active indicative, second person plural, would be grafete, grafete, ye write, or ye are writing. Third person plural for grafo in the present active indicative would be they write, or they are writing. Uh, the part of the verb which remains the same throughout the conjugation is called the stem. Thus the present stem for luo is lu, blepo is blep, and grafo is graf. Greek verb includes tense, voice, mood, person, and number. You'll also notice the distinction there between second person singular and the second person plural. Uh, we use the King James uh, wording just because it's more distinct. If we said uh, you write, we could say that in the modern English could mean singular or plural. In the Greek translations, we want to make a clear distinction that we understand the difference between the singular and the plural. So what I would encourage you to do is to differentiate it by using the thou write, which means a second person singular, thou art writing, versus the ye write, ye are writing, or you write, which is the second person plural on that. Before we finish this lecture, let's just go back over some important key facts that's vital for us to keep in mind. Uh, the part of the verb which remains the same throughout the conjugation is called the stem. Thus, the present stem for luo is lambda upsilon, lu. It doesn't change. Luo, luace, lue, luamen, lueta, luusi. Uh, the word blepo has the stem of blep. Blepo, blepes, blepe, blepamen, blepete, blepusi. And finally, the uh, stem for grafo is graf. Graf o, graf ace, graf a, graf amen, graf ete, graf usi. The stems don't change for the present active indicative verbs. Uh, this is very, very important to note here. Uh, the present active indicative endings, o, ace, a, amen, ete, usi are added to the stem 
to complete that Greek verb. Uh, it's easy for you just not to memorize, you know, the luo, luois, lue, but remember the oase, a, amen, et, usi. Uh, write these down on your flashcards, memorize them, and you then you all you need to do is just look at the stem, identify the stem, and just throw that present active indicative endings on the end to conjugate it. Uh, very easy to do once you get the handle on it. Conclusion. The Greek verb includes tense, voice, and mood. It also includes person and number. So when I see luo, I don't just see, oh, that means I loose. I see a present active indicative, tense, voice, and mood, first person singular, person and number, which translates out I loose or I am loosing. Okay, well that wraps up BL 101 Lesson 3B, the present active indicative verb. And go back over as many times as you need to on this video. We're making these videos free for you, the students of New Testament Greek. If you need help with your studies uh, in New Testament Greek, theology, Bible, uh, feel free to contact me via my website. Uh, my website is ntgreektutor.wordpress.com. Uh, I do make myself available. Um, I am retired from the workforce, and uh, the Lord just allows me to focus mainly on my lessons here, to helping students out with our Bible Institute, and to help you out, to tutor you. Uh, there is no charge. Uh, my payment is just the joy in knowing that there are students out there who are seriously diligent in studying God's Word. So don't hesitate to go to my website, get my contact information, um, pray for us that God would use this ministry to His glory, and we are just eager to hear from you. Thank you very much for going over this lesson. Next lesson is going to be Lesson 3, Lab. We're going to take what we've learned from the vocab and from the present active indicative mechanics here, and we're going to hash through some examples that we can look at and apply what we've learned. Thank you very much. Eager to hear from you. God bless.